In this day and age, the music of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart would instantly come to mind when referring to classical music as a genre. He and other prominent composers of this time period, such as Haydn and Salieri, has mastered the art of elegance in the music they created. And of course, it is worth mentioning the important transitional composers of this period, such as Gioacchino Rossini, best known for his operas, and Ludwig van Beethoven, whose works ushered in the Romantic era with a classical foundation. To share his expertise on the music of the classical period, here is conductor, composer, arranger, and book author, Dr. Joel Navarro. Hello, fellow fans of UP Singing Ambassadors Worldwide. This is Joel Navarro, and I will be giving you a tiny peek into historically informed performance practice of choral works during the classical period. Some historians say that the classical period roughly begins at about 1730, when composers like Georg Friedrich Handel wrote opera music that became increasingly dramatic and had frequent changes in mood in a particular scene. Parallel developments in Italian opera spilled over to oratorio, so it was increasingly hard to distinguish them, if not for the way they were staged. This period of transition lasted roughly 30 years until a time of consistency from 1775 to about 1820. Slowly, an international musical style was emerging. Enlightenment ideas such as liberty, tolerance, fraternity, separation of church and state spread throughout Europe. Traveling to different countries in Europe was much easier. More roads were traveled. There rose an international musical style. The new classical style had a universal appeal. It depended on a logical flow of ideas. Music followed speech to allow natural expression without artifice. Distinct styles came to the fore. The galant style emerged, which became the foundation for the classical style. Classical music was lighter and more song-like. Phrases were generally shorter. Choirs sang more chordal passages, and harmonic changes were slower, unlike the quick-paced harmonies of Baroque music. Insofar as melody was concerned, there was frequent repetition. The melodic flow was interrupted by short, distinct phrases of two or four measures in length. A period consisting of two or more phrases formed a complete musical thought. Melodic phrase endings resolved readily as cadences. As far as harmony was concerned, there were frequent cadences that supported the periodic melodic structure. Harmonic movement was slower than in the Baroque era. The Alberti bass was used in repeated melodic patterns, which outlined the chord to animate harmonies without distracting from melody. Emotional contrasts during the Baroque period were typified as having strong and constant states of affection. These states dominated human emotions which were constantly changing. Classical music began to include contrasting moods within a musical section, rather than only a single emotion which typified Baroque music. Insofar as musical dynamics were concerned, gradual crescendos and decrescendos gained popularity than the terrace dynamics of the Baroque period. Articulations in musical passages such as slurs were in greater use during the classical period to imitate the bel canto style of singing. When it came to rhythm and texture, there was a clear avoidance of the use of note inegale, a type of rhythm also known as overdotting. This practice of overdotting was very typical of French dance music during the Baroque. Choral texture was primarily homophonic in the classical period. There was less ornamentation in the classical period than in the Baroque. Ornamentations, including cadenzas, were given brief symbols. They were not written out in notes and often not marked at all. This is in striking contrast to the Baroque period when there were many symbols that were used. One of the most commonly used ornaments in classical period was the trill, particularly cadential trills. They immediately preceded a cadence. These trills typically began on the upper note, 
thus creating a greater harmonic suspension. It was common practice to conclude cadential points with a turn. Appoggiaturas were another type of ornament commonly used. An appoggiatura is written as a grace note that appears before the principal note, and it would actually have received half the value of the principal note. It is approached by a leap and resolved by a step. Another example of ornamentation is the turn. The one on the left is how it looks like on the score. The one on the right is how it is played. Pitches during the classical period were approximately tuned to A430 Hz, which is about a semitone lower than it is today at A440. There are tuning forks used by composers. The one that Beethoven used tuned A at 455 Hz. Some tuning forks in France varied from 429 to 452 Hz. The vibrato was considered a type of embellishment to the music. Woodwinds used both breath and their fingers to create vibrato. During the classical period, woodwind instruments were made with tone holes carved out of the instrument, not keys which are used today. The design made finger vibrato possible. A few performance styles predominated during this transition period. Sturm und Drang meaning storm and stress, was a movement in German literature that began in the second half of the 18th century. Its goal was to elicit shock in the powerful and even violent expressions of emotion. The Galant style. In 18th century music, Stile Galant referred to as homophonic style as opposed to strict, learned or contrapuntal style. It is characterized by light texture, frequent cadences, heavy ornamented melody, and simple harmony. It is considered the characteristic style of the classical period and can be found in music from all the major centers in Italy, France, and Germany. Empfindsamerstil is a style associated with North Germany and could be considered a dialect of the Galat. The goal of the Empfindsamer style was to express emotion more naturally sensitively and subjectively than in Sturm und Drang. Empfinsam means sensitive or sentimental, and it is characterized by simple homophonic texture, frequent use of appoggiatura or psi figures, and harmonic and melodic chromaticism. From a macro level, opera reforms were being made. Camera opera was gaining ground. New instruments were being made to favor a bigger orchestral sound. Because of these new and more versatile instruments, new and larger forms of music were being composed for specific instruments. Piano sonatas, violin concerti, and symphonies became more prevalent and celebrated. With all this background information, how then shall we proceed with performance? We are an oral culture. Do not be ashamed of it. 80% of the world's learners are oral learners. Musicians of the time knew what the style was by simply imbibing the musical idiom and studying with great masters. They lived and breathed the style, so to speak. For us living in the 21st century, it will be helpful for us to form the classical sound ideal in our head. To do this, listen to and watch classical performances online by well-known groups who specialize in the style. Subscribe to online classical music platforms Compare and critique these performances as a choir. Vocal and choral preparation and performance are informed by the context of their time. The rise of instrumental music saw the development of more versatile instruments with wider ranges. Flexibility with key changes were easier to play and were more powerful in sound. The voice and the instrument always had parallel and interacting developments. So the advice is sing as if your voice was an instrument. Listen to how instrumental music affected articulation, dynamic phrasing, and expression. Vocal agility in operatic performances highlighted practices in phrasing, articulation, 
and interaction with instrumental sound and color, sometimes in imitation, sometimes in complementarity. Here are helpful ideas to develop technical mastery for the classical period choral works. Breath. Develop alignment in breath. Give that tone good breath support. And the tone, make it flexible, warm and expressive. Make it capable of gradual increases in volume and gradual decreases in volume as well. Give it some resonance, a good combination of high and low frequencies in the voice. Develop a mastery in, ex in executing a range of articulations and character, such as legato, marcato, sforzando, tenuto, and the like. Develop a mastery in ornament ornamentation in producing trills, turns, mordants, melismas, so-called rocket figures, singing rapid chord tones, up and down. Study the score. What does the choral score reveal? What was the balance of performing forces then? Given our accessibility to only modern day instruments, how can we satisfy that balance? How do I get the sound of a organ positive? Is it in good taste to use sound patches in keyboards when all organ positives are available? <clears throat> Given our constraints during the time of the pandemic, let's make our decision out of the historical data to, that we have and make considered decisions to make the best out of what we have. Be insistent on the clarity of the cantus firmus or the main melody in choral writing. Keep the choral tone flexible and consider the use of regional Latin used during the composer's time. It adds a quaint color and character to the performance. Be sure to adopt syllabic stress to imitate inflections. Consider historically informed performance through concert venues. Is the venue of the first performance close in size to the current performance hall size? If not, were subsequent performances done in larger halls with larger performing forces? Consider how instrumental color and articulation of older instruments affect your choral performance. How are art articulations developed and executed during their time? The use of urtext scores such as Berenreiter uh, will be very helpful. If these scores are too expensive for you, buy a few copies. Use scores in the public domain and be sure to note down differences between the urtext score and the free score. Consider performance with lower concert pitch tuning at A, maybe at 430 Hertz. Finally, do not obsess too much on historical informed practice. We cannot fully replicate it, but don't ignore it either. It's very good education. Your sincere attempt at HIP gives your choir and audience a partial glimpse of what it was like then. That is good enough. Your ultimate goal is to share the joy and beauty of the music. Thank you all for listening.
Salutaris Ostia is a hymn of adoration and supplication which asks the Lord for strength and aid. This prayer is exquisitely set to music by Italian composer Gioacchino Rossini as his composition transmits the faithful's despair, hope, and complete trust in the Lord. This piece fittingly caps off this segment as it represents Rossini's growth in this time as a composer. Despite being famous for his classically built operas at the peak of his career, his work toward the end of it had crossed over to the Romantic period, which was when he found himself in Paris, finishing O Salutaris Ostea. <laughs> 